Assembling a high quality model steam plant and already it's part 16. Some new spanners, fitting a globe valve and a displacement lubricator to the pump and painting the condenser. But don't get too excited, the painting is just spraying it with primer. The first job though was a visit to Blackgate's engineering. I needed to buy a globe valve to replace the one on the pump because that's a little bit on the leaky side and also it's at the wrong angle. And while I was stood waiting in the shop area of Blackgate's I noticed these small spanner sets. They don't look particularly stunning but I thought well I need a 10BA spanner. I had a perfectly good one but I never used it so I enlarged it to fit a different sized nut and now I haven't got a 10BA spanner. And I need one to adjust the gland nuts on the pump because one of them is leaking and there's no other spanner in the world I can get into there. I can't use my barco, it's far too massive. But these are very, very dinky, very small, and they seem to be made from quite a hard steel. You can see how much pressure I'm having to put on the blade to cut through the pieces between the spanners. And without chopping any of my fingers off, I got through all of the cutting process. I then used my one inch belt sander to grind off the part where I'd been cutting the metal, just to make sure there were no sharp edges. I have a really nice set of spanners already for most of the small BA sizes that I need apart from the 10 BA ones because as I said earlier I modified one of them and looking back this was a pretty stupid thing to do but I needed a spanner of a specific odd size and I never used the 10 BA spanner anyway but I need one now to tighten up the glands on the water side of the duplex steam pump. If you watched the last episode in this series you will notice that while the boiler was in steam and the pump was trying to pump the water into the boiler against the steam pressure, the gland was dribbling. And as we all know, there's nothing worse than a dribbling gland. A dribbling drain cock is bad enough. My box of spanners in the workshop is a thorough mess, and it takes ages to find the spanners that are in the box. So I thought I will organise it. I put the small spanners in a tobacco tin inside the box. And this will make the spanner selection process much quicker. The reason for going to Blackgate's engineering in the first place was to buy this. This is a 90 degree globe valve and it's to replace this one. As this is a 180 degree valve it's in the wrong position and it leaks. The steam pipe that I made in the last episode to connect the steam supply to the pump was only a temporary measure. This can now be discarded. I'm going to make a new one. Before I make a new pipe I have to modify this valve and using one of my new spanners I'm removing it from the valve chest and because these spanners are very very small much finer than even the small set I had before they're great at getting into the corners to remove nuts like this which are very very close to the body of the valve and this is all that remains of the valve now I'll have a close look at it sometimes just by accident jobs are very easy to do and equally hard on other occasions all I had to do with this job was remove the original part that supports the hand wheel thread and using some Loctite 542 to seal it, all I did was screw in the new globe valve. This clip shows the start of making a gasket for it. The old gasket was very thin and leaky. And as you can see, it's quite self-explanatory. Use an ink pad, make an impression on the new gasket, punch out the holes in the new gasket, and finally cut out the gasket with a pair of scissors. Not forgetting to wipe the ink off before you use it, otherwise you get it all over your fingers. As the new gasket is a carbon copy of the old one, thanks to the ink pad, it fits on the studs perfectly. What I need to do next is just mount the assembly to the valve chest, as you can see here, and fit the lubricator. And look is definitely on my side today. Not only did the new globe valve fit in the old globe valve, but the hole down the centre of the steam inlet on the existing valve was 7 seconds of an inch in diameter, which is tapping size for quarter by 32 threads per inch. This brass nut that I'm currently tightening up is just cosmetic, it's covering the external threads. And with the use of the correct thickness of copper washer and some Loctite 542, I can now screw the displacement lubricator in place and I'm using a spanner just to carefully give it that final turn. I thought that while I had the cap off the displacement lubricator I would take this opportunity to fill it with oil and it seems to take a lot of oil the first time. How does the displacement lubricator work? Well, they're amazingly simple. The steam doesn't have to go through the displacement lubricator as long as the displacement lubricator is screwed somewhere into the steam line. You open this small valve, which will let some of the steam via a very small hole in the pipe into the displacement lubricator, but the steam can't go anywhere. All that happens is the steam in contact with the displacement lubricator condenses to water 
and this is not a great flood of water, it's a minute amount. And as we all know, oil floats on water, so the water sinks to the bottom of the displacement lubricator and the oil sits on top, and it has to go somewhere, so a very small amount of oil gets pushed into the steam line. And the more you open the valve, the more steam it admits to the lubricator and the more oil you get. I would usually open this valve one complete turn. This seems to be fine for about an hour's lubrication, after which I shut the steam supply off, open the valve at the bottom, drain the condensate and refill the lubricator with steam oil. It's time now to start the painting process of the condenser. And the first thing I'm doing is scrubbing it thoroughly with some Scotch-Brite soaked in cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as it's known in the USA. Preparation is 90% of the job with painting, and it's very important to start off by removing every trace of any grease or oil that may be on the condenser. It's been sat on the bench for a few weeks, and it's actually been in steam, and that was only yesterday. Health and safety warning? Well, a couple of them. One is, when using cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area. I'm right by the garage door. That's why the image is very bright, because that's daylight you can see. Also, it's a very good idea to wear rubber gloves, and that way you don't get any of the solvent on your hands. And rubber gloves would also be very useful if you were searching for drugs at an airport. Only once the condenser is perfectly clean and free of any oil or grease can I start the painting process. I'm using this stuff. It's alright, I haven't got a disease. I'm just shaking it up and down to mix it. And this is called... Hang on a minute, I'll just stop the video so you can see what it is. This is Precision Paints Grey Single Pack Etch Primer. And it's very important to make sure everything is mixed together inside the can. When you can hear the balls agitating inside, then you know it's starting to mix. Just read the directions on the can. So once it's mixed thoroughly, I can start the painting process. This is really weird paint. It's not like a normal aerosol. It goes on in sort of blobs. So it's very important not to put too much on, because these blobs eventually join up and you get a good finish. This is called etch primer, which has an acid additive that eats into the metal and helps to key the paint. There is a two-pack version of this paint, which is probably better, but it's very poisonous and I think you really need breathing apparatus to use it. This single pack seems to work for what I need. While you're watching this painting job, I'd just like to say thank you to all my Patreon subscribers, but I do need quite a lot more than I currently have. So if you fancy subscribing to Patreon from as little as a dollar a month for all this entertainment, if I can get enough Patreon subscribers, the financial support will make it so that I can do a lot more of these videos. As it is at the moment, like most of us, I have to go out to work. I've been self-employed most of my life, so I can adjust the hours accordingly to allow me to make these videos, but I'm putting a lot of hours in lately making them. So what I would ask you to do, if you possibly can, is subscribe to Patreon, or even send me a small PayPal donation. The details of my PayPal address and Patreon are always in the text box below the picture on the landing page of each of the videos. As a thank you to my Patreon subscribers, and that's Patreon subscribers only, I do offer free downloads, but you have to subscribe to Patreon to get them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.